uh, and final topic is, uh, you know, drugs and alcohol abuse and rehabilitation, which, you know, Kurt is an expert on that, so I'm just going to take the floor. Uh, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but like, well, I have you know, you compared to everybody in here, you got them well, expert. So, what well, was well, well, your history? Uh, I can tell you that I'm a recovering addict. Um, How many years? I've been clean for 21 years. Nice. I have 22 years. God in bless you, brother. Congrats. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that's a hand for God because, uh, you know, I, I was able to, to make it through. Yeah. Right? And God saw fit because he knew that on November 7, 2019, that I'll be sitting here with y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I truly believe that's the only reason why I'm still alive. Yeah. Because I didn't even think I was going to make it to 30 years old. Mm -hmm. like, I've seen some dark, dark days. And, um, you know, I have experience. I go to a fellowship, uh, twelve step fellowship, where 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 I've learned how to deal with my addiction. And um, you know, this thing that's happening today, man, with these, with, with, especially with the younger generation, the fellowship that I go to has a lot of young people coming in. And the opioid. Oh my God! And all that shit. It's, yeah. it's horrible, and they they they're highly addicted, <laughs> man. They they're not like you know. It's not like a game, man. They 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 messed up. You know, I've been to a bunch of funerals and stuff like that. Yeah. So you know, oh, man. this thing is. What is the, what's the age bracket, like, brother Danny? You you see, I've seen teenagers mm. in the rooms of the fellowship. A couple of people said congratulations. Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Tell them I said thank you yes. very much. I really appreciate it, Joe. Deborah Williams, Octavio, yeah. and uh, Sarah. Yeah, Absolutely, I appreciate it. And um. I've seen some. I've seen some dark days where these young people are in there, and they they don't have a clue because yo, listen, what, what, what is it to be young, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and experiment and get through that stage of your life? Mm -hmm. And the game has changed now. It's not how it used to be, yeah. where people were smoking a little bit of weed, maybe drinking and having alcohol and stuff like that it's a different vibe now man people are kids are doing harder drugs yeah. and the opioid thing is like you get some pills from your parents cabinet you take them to a party we all take a different a bunch of different pills what is we that? drink i don't know what that opioids? is opioids yeah i don't know what that is those are like oxycontin yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying uh, okay you know, hydrocodone, hydrocodone you know what I mean? Um, Perfect sex. Perfect sex. Okay. Now, all you got to do is listen to the rap music now. Yeah. Perfect sex. You know, I don't know what I'm saying. Perfect That's the only yeah, thing they do. Yeah, they do a lot more like this. But they're high. You know what I'm saying? No. No. It's crazy. You know what I mean? But the bottom line is, is that they're doing this, and this is how they get addicted. So once you have an opioid, an opioid addiction to pills, after you can't get pills anymore, the next step is heroin. Mm. So now I never did that. Now, I'm old school. I was I was doing cocaine and crack. You know what I mean. And um, I got clean in 1998. And this was before the opioid thing had gotten as big as it got. Yeah. Now it had stopped because it, we went through the 60s and the 70s with it, and then it kind of fell off and crack hit the yeah, scene. Yeah, crack cocaine. And then great. you know the opioid thing came back, mm -hmm. and, and it, the 2000s. It ravaged everybody. It yeah. wasn't just us anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't just the Latinos or the blacks. It Everyone. was now. You, Benny Sewer is doing yeah. shit. You know, it wasn't. Yourself. It was the the, the the war on drugs, 80s and 90s, with Latino blacks, poor whites. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's traditionally that's right. what it was. Now you know you what I'm saying. Know. Now it's it is becoming an affluent issue. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like the nice neighborhoods. Are suffering <coughs> from overdose. Like I can't knock on wood. Not yeah, 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 yeah. It I knock on wood. Yeah. I haven't seen or heard overdoses in Central Iceland. Right, 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 right. right. It's Center Reach. Right. It's Holbrook. Smithtown. It's Smithtown. It's. And you want to know something crazy? It's a touchy subject. Had this conversation with a lot of people. <coughs> You've had this conversation before. And this is not a racial thing. It's 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 half racial, half classes. I was gonna say because I do because believe that some of it is racial. No, no, no. It, it's, it's racial. Anytime, and classism. yeah, 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 and classism. But it's it's become a large issue because of who it's affected. Absolutely. Now the three no, the no. three biggest life changing uh, can't say epidemics, but uh, socio. Uh, or social changes and that we've experienced within your lifetime within our lifetime mm -hmm. i always say it was one the aids epidemic yeah two the uh but first before the aids epidemic was the opioid epidemic which was heroin mm -hmm. in yeah yeah because yeah, a lot of vietnam oh, vets came back right. and they were fucked up i'm talking about the 60s yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm talking about i'm talking about let's say 
if you take the AIDS epidemic, you take the uh, right. homosexual and transgender movement, right. and now the op opioid epidemic. I've watched documentaries and interviews with people who were alive at that time. Obviously, I was I'm like from the late 70s, early 80s. Where AIDS first came about, they called this shit the gay cancer. Yeah, 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 they yeah. called it grace. They, they called it all types of shit. Yeah. Right? And nobody gave a shit. No. As long as it yeah. was affecting Just certain, certain groups group of people. people. Right. Okay? I saw Whoopi Goldberg herself sit and say that <clears throat> us in Hollywood were losing friends. Friend after friend after friend. But, like, it wasn't the high-profile people. It was the hairdresser who may have been gay. Right. The makeup artist may have right. been gay. Nobody gave a shit. They were going to Washington, protesting to get funding for the whole shit. You know when they started giving a the shit? They said Ronald, they couldn't pay Ronald Reagan to utter the acronym AIDS or HIV. When his rich white friends start dying from the shit, that's what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, everybody gave a fuck. Rock Hudson, Rock Hudson. Rock the dad from the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Because people forget Ronald Reagan was an actor in Hollywood Absolutely. before he became friends. He was friends with all the So guys. the minute his friends, now, then if you, you go back, you can read this shit. You can Google it. We got access to tons of information. It. All of a sudden, then in 85, 86, we got the AIDS put up on the great lawn. Mm -hmm. He go from not even acknowledging the shit to all of a sudden now it's on the front lines. Right. Then you move forward to the gay, lesbian, and transgender. All Yo, gays and lesbians have been victimized and all that shit for God knows how long. Right? All of a sudden, rich, affluent white men, Caitlyn Jenner, let's say, and now it's not weird anymore. That yeah. shit was considered. I'm, I'm, not, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. That was off the grid crazy. Exactly. Yeah, like, you know the deal. Like, I mean, let's just tell me what it is. If, yeah, if somebody, off the if somebody crazy, like, lived 20, 30 years or something and woke up and decided they were some other shit, we were like, all right, get this motherfucker some help. When someone who was affluent decides, now all of a sudden the needle moves. Now the same thing is applied here. See, during the, during the drug, during the war on drugs in the eighties and nineties, it was lock these motherfuckers up, throw them, Absolutely. throw away the key because of who it was affecting. Exactly. Now it's affecting judges' families, okay. senators' every, family. Everybody. No, 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 not everybody. It's affecting influent people. Right. Now they it's right. No, 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 it is. You just up to now everybody. Yeah, especially so everybody, everybody includes right. judges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now people. all of a sudden it's, they deserve treatment. Listen, I grew up, I remember fucked up days in the South Bronx. Yeah. As in the summer as a kid. Lots of people get high. Like mm -hmm. hallways, we all types of wild shit. Nobody was saying it's a disease it's back then. Right. Mm -hmm. It was Nobody was calling it a fucking disease in the 80s and the 90s. They were saying, lock these motherfuckers. I know people who had the amount that's considered usage. Not the, because it, Kurt notice, there's an amount that's, 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 that's labeled as a usage amount, and then there's an amount that's labeled oh, above a certain amount. You got distribution charges. Right. You got kingpin charge. You got racketeer. Yo, they were locking motherfuckers up, giving them, it's an old street term called football numbers. They was giving motherfuckers football numbers to have any amount that an addict would have. That's crazy. You don't take an addict and lock them up. Right, right. You get more judges. You get you get more you get more access to drugs in jail than any goddamn place. What happened with the jail started filling up crazy and yeah. like that. So they come home, they still know, get high. There's no treatment involved in that. It's a but now it's a disease it's, because of who's affected. I'm gonna tell you right now though, and I'm and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, right? I couldn't always say this. Um I, I'm I'm glad that it's now considered an epidemic. Yeah. Because you know what? It brings attention to a situation that we've gone through. Absolutely. Right? As a family. Yeah. yeah. He said, he yeah, said, yeah, you see now, me. He first, said, listen, yeah. I, now I know how y'all felt. Yeah. I don't give a shit either. Yeah. Now, that, I don't I don't feel that way because I was personally affected. No, I don't feel that way either because exactly. I was personally affected. I had friends and family who were, had drug issues. And I'm not I saying. I was in Vietnam. Yeah. And he died. But I, I'd like you to finish your. Um, I'm gonna call it a testimony. I'd like for you to to, to continue and, and finish on, on your story. But that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but but my uncle passed away from the disease of HIV because of the fact that he shot heroin yeah. in the 70s and 80s, and he was being on better. You know, there was no epidemic then. Yeah. You know, but um. I would, I, 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 I come up from a good family, you know what I'm saying, and, yeah. and all that. You know, two parents kissed them goodnight till I was 16. Yeah. Brothers, uh, brother and sisters that love, 
to have a lot of love for me and yeah. you know we didn't have a whole lot but i mean i don't come from emotional abuse physical abuse sexual abuse or anything like that yeah. when i went away just like i talked about when i went away to college and i started drinking and i was doing all this stuff and i was bugging out you know what i mean and you used to be the kid right yeah. well i mean see I can't say that because my nephew and niece didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. they kids, they were kids. You but like you saying? said, they they had more people and they with had experience, experience that's right. telling them what yeah. to do, what not to do. But then you get a chance to see other children who have the experiences of others still do the same thing. So I don't use that as an excuse of being a kid. But the bottom line is that I had no discipline. Because I didn't you, have the discipline. I think to a certain extent, you know, barring certain circumstances, most of us, at least, maybe I have more faith in the humans than I should. Mm -hmm. Most of us do the best that we can with the cards that we were dealt. Well, I had a good fucking hand. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I had a good fucking hand. There was no reason for me to go down the path. No, no, no excuse. Right. Damn, I'm talking to you. Get out no. of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You know what? Yeah, that, 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 that's what's key here. Yeah, that's yeah. what's key here. Yeah. 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 If, if we go by that, I was set up for nothing but success. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up and down. My mother and father did not play fucking games. And yo, let me tell you something. My father died when I was 18 years old. He went away from cancer. I was so mad at God and the world and everything else. And I said, fuck this. I'm doing things my way. I, that's it. It was almost like a liberation when my yeah, father left the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started doing shit my way because yeah. nobody could tell me different. My yeah. mom, she was too fucked up over my father. Yeah, yeah. That to stop me from doing the shit that I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So I did what I wanted to do. And I then they put myself in the grave. Yeah. Well, I went from, you, from selling cocaine to using cocaine to... To 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 smoke and crack. And once I started smoking crack, it was rap. Yeah. It was crazy. I I you know jail sticks. I'm constantly the revolve, revolving door man. Yeah. Arrest after arrest after arrest after arrest. Then I went up to then I went went upstate. I committed a big crime, C criminal sale of controlled substance. Went upstate for one to three. Came home violated in two weeks. Wow. Now I got no other criminal history. Violated my parole in two weeks. I was mm -hmm. home for two weeks, went back to jail because I violated my parole. All of it was for drugs. How long did you go back? I did another, I had to do another eight months. Damn. And I had to go back <coughs> to state. So, yo, you know what? I never did, a, like, it never was like a whole long period of jail time. You know what I'm saying? I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. So, when I got out, I wanted help. And, I, and, and they gave me a rehab for parole and they, and I, they took me to a 28 day rehab. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to get better, but I wasn't ready to stop doing things the way I wanted to do them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that cost me. But I was going to ask you, what made you want to change? Pain. Pain? Pain. Pain is a great motivator. Yes, absolutely. All right? And listen, let me tell you something. I'm a family-oriented guy, and that's why, that's why I come from. You know? And when my mother and my sisters and my brother all turn their back on me, and I have like good friends, you know what I'm saying? My best friend yeah. is, is a retired NYPD cop. He went he he went to Southern Connecticut State University. You were surrounded by I was surrounded yeah. by really good yeah. people. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the bottom line is, is that when he had to turn his back on me, you know, his wife and and and, 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 and who was his girlfriend at the time, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about people that I love, the people who love me had to turn their back on me. And I was standing what felt like in a corner of the world alone. And that loneliness was like, yo, listen, if I can't stop using drugs, I'm, I'm going to either end it or stop using yeah, drugs. Yeah. And I was like, I got to stop. They painted you into a corner. Yeah, they yeah. were like, yo, we're not fucking with you. And that speaks that speaks a lot to people but who I are enablers. That's right. My mother ask. was my biggest enabler. And I mm. wanted to tell this story. My mother, God rest her soul, she died in 2004. I was six years clean when she passed away. My mother was my biggest enabler. I'm talking about my brother and sisters were like, yo, you got to stop, you know, helping. You got to stop giving them money. You got to stop doing this. I'm going to win this. Because she was like, I, I'm keeping him alive by having him not go out there and do something crazy. I'm keeping uh -huh. him out of jail. What she was doing was killing me slowly. Yeah. And I will never forget the pain in my mother's face when she had to look me in the face and tell me to get out of her house. She gave me a meal, a change of clothes. She washed the clothes for me. She gave me a change of clothes. And she gave me a, 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 a like what was almost a Thanksgiving dinner. And handed that to me. Heated it up, said, take a shower, sit down and eat. And after that, you got to go. And she was like, here's some numbers for some places you can call for help. But I am done. And do not come back here until you have gone and gotten some help. Mm. And I will never forget the pain in her face when she had to say that to me, her youngest child. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And 
I did that. And she saved my life that day. Mm. And that was because the pain had gotten so great for her that she was not going to watch me kill myself. So day. she had yeah, to yeah. change. She changed. She changed from being the name to towards me to change. But yeah. I prior to that, now here's the deal. I had been broken in the street. God is the master chessman. Because I had been broken in the streets and was on my way home. And I was like finished. And I was going to come home and tell my mother, I look, I got to go get some help. Yeah. And she did that. Mm. Without you even saying Without me even saying anything. Oh, I was shit. absolutely receptive to anything she said. Yeah, yeah. Without did, her even knowing. Without her even knowing it. And I got there and That's I did wild, everything that bro. she asked and all that stuff. That's how God broke us at the same time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she let me stay in there until I was able to get into a rehab. And I went to rehab and I went to a 28 day rehab. And I haven't used drugs ever since, man. February 15th, 1998, man. Right. And, um, you know, I, 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 look, it was hard. Some days, yeah. you know, because you have you make a habit of doing negative shit. You don't you want to do negative shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you break that cycle. That's man. right. And you get people around you that tell you how to not do negative mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, it all started with you. The, yeah. the, my decision making and God. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Me making a decision to help myself. Yeah. But trust me, I'm, I'm a strong. I have a strong belief system because of the fact that I've seen days that I should, probably shouldn't have survived. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, there's a God that, that was looking out for me when I was too stupid to look out for myself. Yeah, right. definitely, brother. Damn. Um, uh, Real quick, is there, is there any information that you could give to, to, like you said, you have a fellowship that you go right. to. Is there, is there any information that you, you can give to the people listening where if somebody may need some help, maybe want Absolutely. to reach if out? There, there, if there, there are plenty of, of, of different services for addicts. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem or you think you might have a problem, um, you can, there, there, there are fellowships for, 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 uh, for recovery, uh -huh. but there are plenty of rehabilitation centers, and you can Google them. Drug and rehabilitation centers. Um, there's 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 LICR. There's uh, there are detox centers where you can get clean off the drugs, and they'll help you with drug replacement therapy uh -huh. for five days. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's there's St. Charles, which is in uh, Port Jefferson. They have a detox and a rehab. Okay. Uh, there's um, Talbot House in Bohemia. That's a detox. You know what I'm saying? There's um, there's CK Post, which is a rehabilitation center, mm -hmm. 28 days. Um, and I, that's where I went. I yeah. went to CK Post. I'm an alumni of CK Post, mm -hmm. and um, there 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 are a bunch. And if you re if you Google Long Island drug and rehabilitate drug uh, and rehabilitation centers, they will all come up. And all you have to do is call them. If you don't have if you don't have medical insurance, you can get Medicaid to take and, nice. and, and, and they will nice. help you Ex and accept pay the Medicaid. For that. Right? And, and Medicaid is accepted by the <coughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's you you can get help. And after you get out of there, come to a knockout tonight. I'm so sorry. Yeah. When you get out of there, get to a 12 step fellowship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to yeah, a 12 yeah. step fellowship so that we can help you. Gotcha. All right. Get to one of the twelve step fellowships so that we can help you. Get to the twelve step fellowship that's for drugs, okay, yeah. and narcotics, and we will help you. Yeah. You know what I mean. The bottom line is, is that we, that's what we want to do. We um, we stay healthy and clean because we help others get healthy and get clean. Exactly. Right. I cannot do this and stay clean without helping somebody else. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. So that's what it's all about, man. You yeah. know what I mean. It's all about like you know just. For me, my life is about helping somebody else. It really is. Yeah. It, it really, I've learned, man. You, you, you. Look, I didn't think I was gonna get live long enough to get gray in a beard. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny because yeah. like, a lot of people are not taught like that. Right. You know, they 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 they're not taught. Um, how, how, how many people are better off because you live? Yeah. You know, listen. Yeah. You know, That's, so if that mindset they, is goes a long way, right. know, people are taught that. Right. You know, you. So, you know, I'm trying to... And changing the world don't mean changing the well, world or the well, planet per se. Right, right. It means that if, 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 if Kurt has something to say to me during my darkest day, that's right. He changed my fucking world. Absolutely. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And I've had people like that there for me when I was going through some shit. Yeah. You understand? It ain't having to do with drugs or whatever. No, 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 no. But it's like... It's not just a yo, drug it's, it's not, yeah, like, you, you change one person, yo, you affected... Mm -hmm. That person's entire world simply because that individual's life has changed yeah, yeah, yeah. and you never know well, you may have sparked the flame yeah. that caused them to go out and 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, nobody, nobody ever sits and thinks like, you know, let's say for example, that, you know, a totally different subject. Bruce Lee was like the one that initiated this craze with martial arts, right? Right? Now, like I watched this documentary where they, like, they were saying that mixed martial arts can literally thank Bruce right. Lee Absolutely. for his popularity because it's done nothing but this since the seventies. Right. But Bruce Lee's master probably didn't know what the fuck he was doing when he was teaching him. No. You understand? Like, like who? I'm quite sure. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure whoever inspired Martin Luther King didn't think like, right. holy shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this and is I, what he's going to be. I think that's what makes it amazing because the lack of selfishness that, that it takes to do that. Yeah. You, know, you could yeah. easily say, man, I'm clean 21 years. I don't give a damn who. But else, right. Yeah. Yeah. You could easily say that. And just and step out of the program, step away. The the level and amount of, of selflessness that it takes to maintain what you're doing is is more than commendable. Yeah, I'm I'm talking, what you want to There's seventy percent of the time I walk in the shop, more than half at least, and he's on the phone with somebody. Yeah, that he's mentoring, sponsoring, mm-hmm. and what have you. And it's like he's talking to these people. Mm-hmm. I've heard Kurt. Talk people off fucking ledges. Like, this is some real shit. I've heard it myself. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's through the grace of God. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not making a fucking It's really shit. not as selfless as you think. Oh, no. I'm going to keep it very real with y'all. I don't talk about this stuff because I want to help others. If I help others, it's I therapeutic feel for you. Good. That's right. I'm grateful that it helps other people. But I talk about it because, listen, I help people because I know that. Let, let me give you an example. There was a dude that my sponsor told me about that was in the Bronx that had 32 years clean. He stopped helping people. He stopped living by spiritual principle. And he relapsed. Mm. Damn. And he lived those 32 years years clean. I will never... My sponsor told me that story, and I was like, yo, my sponsor is 33 years clean. Right? He told me that story, and I was like, wow, like you're never exempt. And he was, and he stressed it to me. He said, "Kurt, yeah. as soon as you stop doing this work, as soon as you stop helping people, your days are numbered." Yeah. And I was like, "Yo, that was an eye opener." Yeah. So it's not as selfless as you might think. The mm-hmm. bottom line is, I want to stay alive. Just keep you on track. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I want to stay alive. Like I want to stay clean. You. If I help somebody else, you know, I feel like God, God will give me a few more days. You know what I'm saying? A few more months. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A few yeah, more yeah. days, whatever. But I just gotta help somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's all yeah. I have to do. And that ain't much to ask. For. Yeah. Shit, for the trade off. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. Just live the rest of your life. That's right. I get to yeah. live. I get to be clean. I get to get some more grand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get to watch my daughter grow up. You yeah. know what I mean? I have, yeah. a, I have a kid. You know, you know, I got a beautiful woman. I got a family that loves me. Like that same family that turned their backs on me. I but did the eulogy. Love, but I did the eulogy at my mom's funeral. Mm. Wow. They told me to go up and say some words for mom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I this thing has made a difference. Right. So right. I just want to continue to Why give stop? it back. Right. If it ain't broke, don't fix don't it. Like I said, it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The shit is working. Don't change it. Yeah. So, you know, people be like, yo, come on, man, just climb a beer. I'm like, you don't want me to do that. <laughs> I will rob you. I will rob you. <laughs> yo, yo, I will rob yo, you. We done. <laughs> yo, we went way over but, but YouTube, Facebook, IG, but cuts off after an hour. This was a very interesting, and I personally feel, I'm quite sure most people were watching, super helpful information. Without a doubt. Because if, if, if what he had to say tonight can't help you individually, with the way and the state that things are nowadays, there is no way I doubt that it's, it can't or couldn't help somebody, somebody else. that you know. Mm-hmm. You understand? So that's the reason why we're an hour and 38 minutes into the show. Wow. When it normally goes, well, we schedule for 60 minutes because I don't believe in handcuffing messages that the masses need to hear. And I ain't saying, obviously, we ain't worldwide. But listen, like we said, you change one person, that could be somebody's world. Absolutely. You know, so whether it's 50 people watching this shit or Absolutely. 450 people watching the show, a thousand, we served our purpose. Tonight. That's right. I don't give a shit if it's one person watching. Right. One if person. you got something out of it. We did our job. Thank God. You know, That's yeah, it. exactly. So, yo, we appreciate Kirk coming no through. Doubt. Listen, Thanks for having we're going to be out, man. You got to come back. Absolutely. You got to come back. Um, also, yes, sir. like I